Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In the last tutorial, we had a quick look at data augmentation. And again, if you haven't watched that, I definitely encourage you to do that because it makes more sense when you watch this tutorial. So there, we looked at the data augmentation and tried to understand what every line of uh, data augmentation process is. And now let's actually go ahead and use that towards malarial cell classification. Again, this is a binary classification where you have uh, one set of images uh, that we use for training, and these images are parasitized, and the other one are uninfected. So this is a binary classification challenge. Now, we have uh, uh, quite a few images for parasitized and uninfected, but then not enough to be uh, uh, to, to get a robust segmentation done. So let's actually augment that and then use that as an input to our model.fit. So let's jump in. So first of all, again, just to have a quick second look at uh, image data generator. Again, let me go ahead and uh, zoom in. Uh, image data generator is part of keras.preprocessing.image. Okay, so here is how you define it, image data generator. Again, uh, these are various parameters. So let's go ahead and uh, rotate the image, shift the image height, and a whole bunch of other things. Now, once you do this, again, please watch my previous tutorial on this topic. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, once you do that, right, the next step is to, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I thought about uh, for a second about jumping in, but I think it does make sense to have a, in case you haven't watched my previous tutorial, to actually uh, enhance or augment, sorry, one of our images. So what I'm going to look at is again here I have a folder called cell images and then parasitized and I have about uh, 500 images. Yeah, not definitely enough. So let's augment it uh, a couple, two, three times or so. So these are a whole bunch of uh, cell images. Let's actually take the first image, cell 179 or so. Uh, I think that's what we are. Let me expand this side so you can see things a bit clearer. Okay, so I'm reading that image directly, just single image for demonstration purposes, okay? We'll move on in a second. And then, um, uh, and uh, again, we did this in the last tutorial, but uh, we are generating uh, about 20 images. So let's go ahead and dump them into our augmented folder augmented folder we have nothing right now so we should see 20 images in a minute okay so it's uh, running and we are saving all those images into augmented and there you go so this is our first image and then it got augmented how by rotating sh uh, width shifting by 20 percent randomly not just by 20 percent but anywhere from zero to 20 percent randomly height 20 percent and all that stuff okay in this case i'm going to fill uh, with constant again if you watch my previous tutorial I said I don't like constant because it just puts a black background but in this case our input images all have this black background so I'm okay filling it with a constant value in fact this is what uh, is required for this so we took this I don't know sad looking cell because it's infected with malaria and we augmented it many ways you can see how it's rotated and everything okay this is for single image this is not this is not what we are uh, what we want to do so let's delete all these lines and now get to what we actually want okay so here we are actually defining our uh, model convolutional neural network and again uh, go ahead and watch my previous tutorial. So we are re have to resize all our images to 150 by 150 because that's what this model expects as an input, okay? So 150 by 150 by three. And if I run this, am I printing the summary? Yeah. So let's go ahead and look up our model. Sequential is not defined. Oh, sorry, I haven't. Okay, let's go ahead and run this one more time. There you go. So here is our model that, uh, so the input, layer is 150 by 150 by three, the second convolutional layer is generating this and so on. And finally, our output is a binary output, uh, zero or one, okay? So that part again, I have already covered it in a different video, so let's not uh, spend too much time there. So now, this is where the data generator part actually comes into the picture. So first, let's go ahead and copy these lines of code. Okay, so it's again very deep learning. If you understand like every step, it's it's uh, it's very simple, right? So first, we define a model. 
And now we have to fit this model to the data that we have, the training data. So for that, what I'm trying to do is define a batch size of 16 because I want to train a data generator using image data gen. I want to generate my training data. And for that, I would like to rescale my input by 1 over 255. Again, the input we are converting our unsigned integer 8s into floating point numbers. So this is how I'm doing that, 1 over 255. And then uh, I'm only doing three of these operations, or four operations. One is randomly rotating between 0 to 45, shear, zoom, and horizontal flip. Remember earlier I showed you a whole bunch of operations. I just picked a few here, OK? So this is how I am defining my train data generator. Now, if you want to validate, you can also do uh, uh, a whole bunch of operations on validate. But in this case, I'm only rescaling it. Rescaling is a must, yeah? So that's why I'm doing that for validation. But in addition, if you want to uh, rotate and do all kinds of stuff to your validation data set, go ahead, go ahead and do that, okay? Now, once we do that, again, I'm gonna share the code, so please pay attention to what I'm saying here. Uh, I'll share the code so you can always do this yourself. Now that we did train data gen, now I'm actually uh, uh, getting the data from a directory yeah, flow from directory. Remember, again, you can do dot flow if you already have your data. If not, read from the uh, directory called cell images, right? So our directory is, uh, sorry, data augmentation cell images. So it's going to read parasitized and uninfected, okay? Cell images, and then it's going to resize it to 150 by 150 automatically. That's why I love this flow from directory. So I'm resizing it. And then my batch size equals to 16, right? We defined our batch size up here. And my class mode is binary because we're gonna use binary cross entropy and this is a binary classification problem anyway. Okay, now that's my train generator. And now let's go ahead and do the validation generator, which should be pretty much the same step, okay? Uh, very similar, except in this case, my images are coming from a folder called cell validation. And uh, there you go, this is my folder, okay? So I have different set of images for validation over there. That's all. Everything else is exactly the same. Okay, now, next step. We are almost there. So uh, I always recommend putting some checkpoints as part of your model. Again, uh, in case you don't know, uh, I don't want to make this a checkpoint tutorial, but again, uh, first of all, I gave a file path because I would like to save my models. Uh, after every so many epochs, for example, or under certain conditions. And then my model checkpoint is, uh, I'm actually monitoring a, va uh, a validation accuracy, okay? And it's going to save best only equals to true. So if the, if the validation accuracy gets better, it's going to save that model, okay? So eventually I'll have a great model, even, uh, uh, you know, after so, so many, so many, uh, uh, after certain, uh, you know, through some frequency, let's say, okay? I was trying to search for words over there, sorry about that. Finally, uh, now we have to apply the model or fit the model, and uh, let's copy all the lines anyhow. So these, this is it. And this may look intimidating initially, but see how easy this is, yeah? So model.fit, normally we would just do model.fit, that's it if you don't have augmentation. Because we have data augmentation, we are doing fit generator, okay? Now the first one is where is my input data? Input data is coming from my train generator. That's why when you're using this uh, data augmentation, you don't save it to your local drive and then upload it back into the, into the uh, program. You can do that, nothing wrong with that. You can do that, but why play with all this memory if the data can be generated on the fly? Yeah, so here is the data. Now, one thing I should stress is if you use data augmentation, the input file that is used for augmentation will never ever be passed into model.fit. It's always the generated data. Maybe the generator randomly generates the input file by applying rotation as zero and shift as zero or something, but the input file itself will not be part of your model.fit, uh, okay? So this is something I wondered initially. I'm like, okay, I'm using generator, but what happens to all the thousand images that I, I have? They're not going to be part of your uh, fit. 
okay so a generated or an augmented image is going to be part of the fit okay so that's the train generator everything else is pretty straightforward how many steps per e epoch how many epochs do you want to do uh, validation data where is the validation data coming from again you can point it to a folder but in this case we are actually pointing it to validation generator that's generating uh, uh, these validation uh, data okay and my steps is uh, 800 and callbacks is callback list which is which is my checkpoints right there okay and after everything is done go ahead and save my model this is it now i'm ready to go ahead and run this model so this is as simple as it is and you see uh, it found 84 images belonging to two classes it's going to kind of augment the data and uh, progresses it and eventually will get uh, a model. So let me go ahead and kill this because uh, again, I do have uh, 4 GB uh, GPU, but uh, still I don't want you to stare at the screen. So I already did this and I have a model called malaria augmented model dot h5 and this was I think only after like 500 epochs, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and test it. Uh, I could have done it in the same file, but uh, I've written another couple of lines uh, again completely manual so a lot of lines for something that should not be a lot of lines okay so i'm uh, loading load model right model is load model which one malaria augmented model dot h5 and i'm reading two images one out of uh, a parasitized image you know from the validation folder the other one is uninfected let's see if the model is rightfully classifying parasitized as parasitized or and so on and uh, this is just pre-processing, right? I'm converting my image into array and then reshaping it because that's what goes into this model. Uh, and then now we are generating it. So let me go ahead and run this. And uh, for the first one, I should get, again, let's expand this. So prediction for parasitized is zero, right? And zero indicates parasitized. And uh, prediction for uninfected is one and one indicates uninfected. Again, this is, this is a... Uh, a uh, cheesy way or an easy way of doing this uh, but go ahead and validate this on a whole bunch of uh, images or just look at the validation accuracy once you're uh, done with writing your malarial cell uh, you know cnn okay so i hope uh, again uh, you learned uh, something new especially the key message i would like to deliver here is how to define your image data generator which we have already done it in the last tutorial but again one more quick look here and once you define it how to generate the data and how to input that as part of your model.fit again it's model.fit generator so thank you very much for your attention again please subscribe to this channel keeps me encouraged to create more such content let's meet in the next tutorial thank you very much